guys, it's Amy. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope everyone's having a wonderful day as always. Before I get started with the video today, I just wanted to say thank you so much to everybody for all of the support I've been getting. It's really, really wonderful. I really didn't expect my tiny little channel to do as well as it's been doing. And it's because of you guys for watching me and sharing, liking, subscribing. Please, if you haven't subscribed already, do so right now. That'd be awesome. I appreciate it so much. And of course, I love getting comments from you guys, hearing your opinion, and you know, being able to kind of discuss everything with regard to all these cases and what have you. That's really the reason I made this channel to begin with, to open up some conversations about um, a lot of the things that were happening um, around us. So with that said, I'm just going to get rid of the mushy stuff and talk about our next crime. So today I want to talk to you about Anthony Todd, who was recently accused of killing his entire family. This is Anthony Tote, not Todd. I've been saying the name wrong. And this is his wife and three children. Now, what I would love to know is how he went from this man here or to this father right here or to this man right here loving his kids to the man we now see here the man that is accused and has openly admitted to killing his entire family and dog so anthony todd seemed to be basically living the dream he was very financially stable he had two homes two business offices a beautiful family these are his kids, his three amazing kids, winning awards, playing the piano, brilliant children. Both sons were into musical instruments, musical history. They played the violin. They played the piano, many different things. And his wife and beautiful daughter, he had an amazing family. outward appearances, social media and whatnot, it seemed like he was basically living this amazing life of luxury, love, perfection, kind of what everybody strives for in life. But as you know, outward appearances can be very deceiving, it turned out that his life was not even close to perfect, not by a long shot. So now we have another man who decided to take the selfish way out and take everybody along with him. So what happened with Anthony Todd? The authorities in Florida were dispatched to the Anthony home on January 13th, just a, a couple weeks ago, basically. That is when they found Anthony Todd at his home on 202 Reserve Place in Celebration, Florida. This is their beautiful home in Celebration, Florida. Here is a better view with the trees cut in the front. And then here is a picture of the back of the house with the swimming pool that must have been great for the children. But this is the day that the bodies were found and Anthony Tote was arrested for killing his family. You can see the crime scene tape is up and apparently Disney World made this area for an idyllic family. It was made in 1990 by Walt Disney. They found Anthony Todd there. He didn't answer the door, but they ended up going in anyway, and they found him there. He had told them that his wife was upstairs sleeping and his three children were probably at a sleepover, but it did not turn out that way because when the police continued to search the home, they found the bodies of the entire family in one room. The wife and mother, Megan, was just 42 years old. She was found stabbed twice in her abdomen. They haven't released the official manner of death. They just have stated that there was stabbings. And then there was their son, Alec, who was 13, 
he had one stab wound to the abdomen. Tyler, who was 11, had one stab to the abdomen. And their baby girl, Zoe, who was four years old, did not seem to have any wounds. So I'm not sure what happened with her yet. We'll have to wait and see what the medical examiner comes back with. So if you guys find out that, please let me know in the comments, or you can always email me at mindsquashers at gmail.com, along with any other information you might have that I don't discuss. So they also found the family dog, Breezy, was also killed. Um, I'm also not sure how he died. I believe it was also a stab wound, which is just, the, the whole thing is very horrible. Here's the entire family around Christmas time. It shows Anthony and Megan, then Tyler on the left, Alec on the right, Zoe in the middle, and even the family dog, Breezy, at the bottom right corner. So Anthony Todd, he had told police that he had taken a bunch of Benadryl and he was threatening to hurt himself. So prior to taking him to jail, they took him to the hospital to get him checked out. Everything was okay with him, which is kind of like, let him, let him die. But um, then they took him to jail and he's cooperating with police. He admitted that he killed his entire family. And he also had explained that the family was not aware of issues that had been going on with him back in Connecticut, which is actually somewhat how the police ended up finding the body. So let's uh, kind of go back and talk about how this may have happened. Um, as I said, Anthony Todd had two homes. So he had a home in Connecticut and he had a home in Florida. His family was living in the Florida home in Celebration, Florida. Um, Celebration, which I had never heard of before, is actually supposed to be this really idyllic family lifestyle model homes. Celebration is a Disney constructed town located near Disney World. It was constructed to be an alternative life in a world that was struggling to maintain family values. If you wanted to embrace a fantasy world, you wanted to live in Celebration. The site says that the town was a cross between the original Stepford Wives and the Truman Show. So that's interesting. These homes were all very beautiful and very uh, pricey. So he had a mortgage of about $5,000. I think it was $4,900 a month. And he had actually not paid the December payments and had been renting the house as of May of 2019. And Supposedly they were going to be getting evicted. That seems a little bit soon considering that this was just going into January. Regardless, they said December was missed and they were being evicted. But of course, he says that the family was not aware of this. So that would be a nice shocker when you go and talk to your wife about that, which makes me wonder if he, he went to Florida and finally talked to his wife about all of his issues and maybe that started a big fight and he kind of flipped out and that's how the murders happened. It's a possibility. We don't know yet. We don't know why. I haven't found out why. Again, let me know if you know. That would be great. So he hadn't paid the mortgage, but also he had a lot of other issues going on, mainly with finances. He had two practices for th physical therapy in Colchester, Connecticut. Ironically, the name of them was actually family physical therapy. So, I mean, that's just really the disgusting icing on the cake, if you will, but... Um... There it is, the family physical therapy where Anthony Tote worked. He began to acquire a tremendous amount of debt, and so he was, you know, kind of taking out loans to pay for this loan, and, you know, paying for that one and that one and that one, and then kept digging himself into debt. He then started insurance fraud and billing fraud. He started billing insurance companies for patients and work that he had not done, which I don't know how he thought that was going to work out, especially with the, the, the amount that he was billing was ridiculous. But on top of that, not just the insurance companies, he was also billing the patients. And some of these patients were not even his patients. They hadn't been there in a long time. So if you consider the fact that he's got a physical therapy practice, he billed some patients that are no longer going to him or haven't seen him in a very long time. It's a physical therapy practice, which means there's a very high potential that some of these clients may have been off from work 
and weren't getting a regular income. So they're checking their bills. And if they see that they're being billed for something and they are positive, they haven't even been there, there's going to be complaints. So I don't know what would lead a person to believe that they were going to get away with this. And he wasn't getting away with it because the um, Connecticut authorities were watching him, coming down on him. The Connecticut Attorney General and the FBI were involved in this. So they were keeping track of all of this fraudulent billing Anthony Todd was doing. So he was going to have some legal issues because he was about to be charged with this stuff. And clearly, it seems he decided to flee Connecticut to his Florida home to get away from all of that which did not work out well clearly but with regard to the family no one could get a hold of them for a while and they were getting very concerned obviously which with good cause and so they had started a facebook page They were posting all sorts of stuff about the family being missing and looking for help. And of course, they, they also called the police in Florida to have um, them go out and do a well visit. So the police had actually gone out to the house on several occasions to check on the family. I believe there was one on December 29th. There was a couple more in January, I think January um, 10th and 11th. And then it was on January 13th that they finally went into the home and checked in on these people. Because all the other times, they weren't getting anybody to answer the door, so they just weren't doing anything about it. I mean, I don't want to say anything bad about the authorities, but I just don't understand that when everybody's telling you that they've been missing. And you know that there's all this uh, crazy financial legality issues with the, the husband and father in Connecticut and, and he's now fled over to the Florida home. Everybody's disappeared. I mean, come on. I do have to say though that Russ Gibson, the Osceola County Sheriff, did get very choked up when talking about the murders, particularly with the baby girl. And he seemed very upset that this would happen in his community. It turns out though, they did say that the bodies seem to have been dead for several weeks, two, three weeks potentially. So that even adds another dynamic to this because that means that Anthony Todd had been living in a home with his family's dead bodies, the dog's dead body for several weeks. I can't even comprehend how someone could do that. That's just, unimaginable. I don't really want to even consider it. So that was a crazy situation in itself. They had talked to neighbors and then some of the neighbors hadn't seen the family since December. Some of the neighbors said they hadn't seen the family since November, but apparently nobody considered this to be suspicious because this family traveled a lot. So now if you think about the situation that this man is in, and believe me, I am not defending him at all. I'm just trying to understand how this came to be and how his mind would work with this type of situation. He has all this, these financial issues going on, legality issues that maybe his family, his wife doesn't know about. He's obviously living a lifestyle well beyond his means at this point. He's taking care of a family of five, plus a dog, paying for two homes, expensive homes with expensive mortgages. He's paying for two business offices and he's paying for vacations, presumably, for the family as well. I imagine they were doing okay at some point to be able to acquire all of this stuff, but then it just, you know, compiled on and on and on, and then he's trying to fix it by compiling more debt and issues on and on and on, and, you know, could all of this financial chaos and the issues with taking care of his family and the police and all of this could that have made this man spiral out of control uh i think that's that yeah a lot of those aspects m must have contributed to this i would imagine but i don't think most people consider that their best way out of something is to kill their entire family it takes a very disturbed person to do something like that clearly so 
you know, you, you kind of have to wonder, was this some sort of cycle? Was there a reason or was, were there other issues in this man's life that would cause him to think that this was the way out of everything or this was what he had to do as his outcome? And yeah, there was, there was definitely some issues in his past uh, and we're going to get into that. So to get into the past of Anthony Todd, we're going to go back to March of 1980. It turns out that he had a very traumatizing childhood. And when he was only four years old, March 19th, 1980, literally the day that I was actually born, which really just kind of freaked me out a little bit, but not relevant to the story. March 19th, 1980, he, Anthony Todd, a four year old, was awoken, was awoken? Woke up to hear his mother screaming. And he went into the hallway and as he had stated as, when he was four years old, he quoted that he saw a man wrestling with mommy in her bed. He said he saw his mom wrestling with someone in the bed. And then another man came over, picked him up and brought him back to his bedroom and put him back in bed. Weirdest thing. Very weird, right? His mother, Loretta Schmidt, was living with her son and daughter, so Anthony Todd and his older sister, in Ben Salem, Pennsylvania, when on March 19th, 1980, two men apparently broke into her house. So Loretta Schmidt was attacked in her home of Ben Salem, Pennsylvania in 1980. But she didn't remember much, and there's a good reason for that, because she was actually shot in the head. She ended up losing her left eye, and it was replaced with an artificial eye, and she has a bullet lodged in the back of her head for life. But she survived this attack, crazy enough. So she only was able to tell them a couple things that she could recall, and this is, I mean, this is what she said, that... All she remembered was initially putting the kids to bed and then putting herself to bed. And then she said she woke up to find a random guy laying next to her in her bed and another guy standing there in the bedroom. After that, the only thing she said she remembered was suddenly having her head hurt really bad, looking in the mirror and seeing blood. So then she called her neighbor. Again, weird. Why would she call her neighbor and not 911? I don't know. She called her neighbor. The police did show up um, at midnight shortly after she called the neighbor. So clearly the neighbor called the police to get her some help. And I guess it worked because she survived. Amazingly, she survived. Now, where it gets even worse is that about four months later, her husband, so Anthony Todd's father, was accused of actually setting up this attack. Here is Anthony Tote's parents, Robert and Loretta. Loretta would be the attack victim and Robert is the accused attacker. It wasn't him, he didn't do it, but he hired two hitmen to kill his wife. And he did not go out and hire, you know, legit hitmen. He hired past students that were his students from when he worked at Ben Salem High School as a special education teacher and wrestling coach. So he hired a, a guy that was mentally handicapped to kill his wife. So the man that he had hired was 19 year old John Chairmont. And he went on to actually testify and he testified that the husband and father, his name being Robert Todd, asked him to kill their babysitter for $800. So supposedly he didn't even know it was the wife and mother. He thought it was the babysitter that he was killing. So, you know, there's a lot of interesting situations here. So Robert Tote was a popular high school student, and as we know, he then went on to be a special education teacher where he ended up meeting John Shermont, who he hired to try to kill his wife. 
it turns out that Shermont says that he initially was supposed to catch her off guard at her car at work, but chickened out, and then got drunk one day after being given a gun by the husband, Robert, and that's when he went up there and just surprised her and shot her. Now, another interesting aspect to this case is that John Charmont, as an older person, got in trouble once again with the law because he supposedly burnt down his house or attempted to burn down his house to collect insurance money because he was low on cash, which sounds a lot like Anthony Tote. How coincidental is this crazy case? That man ended up going into a mental institute for some time. He had a, 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 obviously he had a partner with him, but I didn't find any information about the partner. So I'm not really sure about that. If you guys know, let me know in the, in the comments or email me, mindsquashers at gmail.com. I still feel like that's a stupid email, but too late. Anyway, um, so Robert Todd denied that he ever did. He, he, he was part of this crime. He completely denied it. Still does. He's continued to deny it. And his wife refused to believe that it was him, supposedly. And she stuck by him throughout the entire trial, saying that her husband was innocent and would not have hired people to attack and kill her. She eventually came to the understanding later on in life, it was about four years later, that, you know, yeah, her husband tried to fucking kill her. Just check out this newspaper article when Robert Tote was convicted of attacking his wife. Talk about creepy looking. Another layer to this was that the reason he was trying to kill her, as usual, what do we think it was? Affair. Several. Several affairs. We don't even know how many. But uh, we know that, they know that Robert Todd was actually with one of his girlfriends on the night that his wife was attacked. He had told her that he was going to the uh, college because he had been taking college classes to get his doctorate. However, it turns out that he had never been attending the college at all. He wasn't registered, nothing. So, you know, it was a, it was a pretty easy way for him to be able to cheat on his wife because he could just say he was heading out to class to, you know, make a better living for everybody. He was actually engaged to another woman. He was engaged to a nurse that lived uh, in a nearby town named Colleen Fetch. They had, you know, gone so far as planning the wedding and there were even pictures of them cutting the the wedding cake, which I don't really get that because they weren't actually having a wedding yet. They were still supposedly just planning it. So they were taking early pictures to practice. I don't, I don't know what the hell that was. Maybe while they were doing the cake test, uh, testing the which cake they like. I, that's really irrelevant to the, the story, but just another weird thing. He was also dating a, or having an affair with, uh, Judy Worthington, who was a 17 year old student or past student, I'm sorry, past student of his. So, you know, she's not his student anymore. It's okay. Even though she's 17 and he's married, whatever. And there was supposedly several others. Uh, I think there was a lot of students that he had been hooking up with and who knows who else. But I mean, I didn't even realize you could be engaged while being married, while dating and all this other stuff. I mean, he had a lot going on but still denied that he ever had anything to do with his wife's uh, attack. Denied it. And I actually feel like she knew from the jump a little bit. You know, I always think stuff like this, but the fact that she called the neighbor, I keep going back to that. She called the neighbor. She didn't really remember anything. And she stood by him for, for like four years, at least believing in him for about four years. And it, until she met someone new and remarried and what have you. But you know, it wasn't just the husband, or it wasn't just Anthony Todd's father that was a fuck up. His mother, after this horrible attack that obviously had to have traumatized this poor kid, she continued to have him living in the same house where the attack had happened. So she takes him back to the environment where he witnessed this terrible crime that would scar a four-year-old. But she did say, she did say, she switched him to another bedroom to try to alleviate the nightmares that he was continuously having. Didn't help though, so great job mom. And then four years after, in 1984, they did end up moving when she remarried and they moved to Massachusetts, I believe it was. 
So consider the fact that by 1984, Anthony Todd's still only eight years old. So he's dealt with seeing this attack, going, finding out that it's his father. His father went to prison, by the way, for about 10 years, almost 10 years. And then he got out again. But then he lives in the, then Anthony Todd as a child for, you know, another four years stays in the environment where he had witnessed this horrible situation, this horrible crime against his mother. That's just a lot to deal with. So you feel bad for him as a kid and it does give you some kind of understanding as to what was going on with his mentality, I would say. Still not an excuse at all. The guy should just have death. Absolutely should get death. But, I mean, it gives you some insight into his, uh, his life, his childhood, all that stuff. And another thing that I found interesting was that while the police were doing their investigation, there was this lake that they were actually searching for the weapon. They had been told that the weapon was in this lake. So they were, while they were searching um, through this lake, they noticed that Robert Todd, the uh, accused husband, had happened to go to the lake and he brought Anthony Todd his four-year-old son with him and when the police questioned him he just said he was bringing his son fishing it was just a big huge crazy coincidence uh so that didn't help his case I would imagine talk about making him look more guilty and again bringing your son fishing as a cover for the fact that you're checking up to see what the, the cops are doing at the lake. Just one thing after another, just horrible, horrible, horrible. So he went to jail. Anthony's father did end up going to jail. Like I said, he went for almost 10 years. He got out and interestingly enough, he is now living somewhere in Massachusetts, I believe as well, which, you know, his wife had moved to Massachusetts from Pennsylvania, they moved to Massachusetts. As far as Facebook and whatnot, apparently this guy, you know, remarried, has a new family and is a happy, happy family guy now which is crazy and almost unfair I want to say and here he is Robert Tote still looking like a psycho creepy guy and I wonder what he thinks of this I mean he had to have he obviously knows that this took place I wonder if he feels any blame. I would like to know what he thinks. If Anthony Todd's father has made any statements or what have you. And I'll, I'll get back to you guys with that if I find anything out. But I think he should feel some blame. And we don't know if that's what caused all this to happen. But it's it's a, it contributes. I think at all of this, the family life and all of this, his past family life, his father was cheating on his mother and then tried to offer. And then he gets stuck in the house still. He's dragged to the freaking lake while the police are searching for the gun that he that that potentially almost killed his mother i mean it boggles the mind it's insane the whole thing is crazy and the sister his older sister after anthony todd killed his entire family and the family dog which really why 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 would you need to do that she um gave a statement talking about what wonderful parents Anthony Todd and his wife Megan were and how loving he was to everyone including of course his his wife and kids and that he was you know this this great family guy um that's just not necessary I don't think she should have said that I mean I can understand maybe being on your trying to be on your brother's side but not in that manner that is a slap in the face to the rest of the wife's family the, the rest of their family he just killed his his whole fucking family and the family dog and then lived with the bodies for several weeks along with all this other financial legal bullshit yeah no not a loving family guy stupid to even say but that's just my opinion so you know what i think that's the whole story pretty much it was a big one so it took a while I hope you guys got something out of this and please let me know what you think in the comments section. What do you think is going to happen with this guy? He absolutely deserves death. If you guys have any other information that I didn't have in here or if you have any comments to say about this case, please let me know and I will absolutely respond to everybody. Thank you again, guys, everybody who's been supportive of my channel, my little baby YouTube channel is getting 
you know, a lot more support than I would have thought. And I really do appreciate it. You guys have no idea. So please like, share, subscribe. If you haven't subscribed already, do it right now before you forget. And click the bell. The bell is the most important now, apparently. And that's it. All right. I will talk to you guys later. Thank you so much. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you.